right, hello and welcome to another Expert Inside interview. My name is John Golden from Sales Pop, online sales magazine and Pipeliner CRM. Joining you as usual from San Diego. And today I am delighted to welcome back uh, Mickey Kennedy, who is in Maryland. How are you doing, Mickey? I'm doing fine. How are you? Good, good. I mean, he is the CEO founder of e-releases, and we're going to talk press releases today. So, um, um, you know, Mickey, as all this stuff is going on in the world and all these digital things and new things are coming out all the time, um, the press release, uh, a lot of people maybe overlook it or think that it's anachronistic or it belongs to the past and all of that. So um, from your point of view, what's a what's a press release? How does it work and why is it still relevant? <clears throat> so basically a press release is an announcement that's written in the third person. Uh, it uh, may have some quotes in it. Uh, generally, the headline's the most important part in the opening sentence. Uh, it's really written for the journalist as opposed to for the audience. The journalist will turn it into an article or write it in a way that's uh, structured for their audience. And it's it's very simple uh, to, to write a press release. It's not sophisticated or anything like that. But what you should be sophisticated with is what you choose to write about. And that has to be strategic. Uh, so many releases that I see are boring press releases, press releases where you have a new hire and it may be someone who's not like really famous in your industry. And, you know, sending that out and paying to send it over the wire is a disservice because you're not really going to get much coverage, if any coverage out of that. So you want to, when you're sending out a release and going over a wire to make sure you're doing something strategic and important to you and your company. Yeah. And um, I mean, I guess if you think of it from a journalist's point of view, right, I mean, let's face it, and, and publications and that they're always looking, I mean, they have slow days like everybody else, they're always looking for interesting things to highlight. So if, you're, if your press release isn't interesting or it's not newsworthy or whatever, you know, it's going to get overlooked. But I, but I guess the appetite for, the, for good press releases from a journalist's point of view is still there, right? Absolutely. Um, jur journalists are always hunting for the next story. They're always under deadline and have to come up with content. So that's why I think press releases still work very well, because most journalists start there looking for something to inspire them to, you know, do a story. And when they look on the wire, they generally are looking at their industry feeds uh, uh, with a, a login to the wire they can customize their feed so they can make sure that if they don't cover certain things in your industry, if those keywords appear, they can exclude it. So it really does them a good service of really browsing headlines that are really relevant to them. And if you're there, you could stand out and um, get in print as a result of that. Yeah. And, and as you mentioned, uh, choosing what to put in a press release or, or what to do a press release about <clears throat> is is very important and like strategically decide. So what are some of the things that you should take into consideration when you're thinking about doing a press release? How do you how do you make sure that it's strategic and it's the right one to do? Right. So uh, I'm going to start with the type of press release that always generates pickup. Um, and by media pickup, I'm talking about articles written about you. Um, there's a lot of syndication that happens with press release so that your press release might appear on Yahoo Finance and a few other websites. And that's kind of a distraction because what you're really looking for is a journalist writes an article about you and it appears in their publication. It could be mm -hmm. online or it could be in print or it could be both. Um, but that's the real goal of it. And having something strategic, the most strategic type of press release that I see is uh, a survey or study. So mm -hmm. if you do a survey or study within your industry, um, just by being the author of it, you will get cited in the article. Um, and uh, you can also link to all of the results of your survey or study because you're certainly not going to include them in the press release. Your press release is going to focus on the most interesting or compelling things that your survey or study uh, came up with. And you're going to have quotes that sort of elicit why it probably skewed a certain way or in, and why these results are what they are. And those generally result in eight to 14 articles across most industries, um, uh, you know, when you, when you do something like that. And when I recommend this to clients, they get really tripped up. 
they think, oh, doing a survey sounds complicated. Mm -hmm. It can be as simple as a Google form or a form on SurveyMonkey and then just sharing it with someone. And if you don't have an audience yourself to share it with, like your leads or your customers wouldn't be a good uh, and large enough pool of people, uh, partner with a independent or small trade association within your industry. Um, I, I say small or independent because the large trade associations are very difficult to work with, but the small and independent ones don't get a lot of love. And so if you're saying, hey, I'm doing a survey in our industry and I'm going to be issuing the press release over the newswire, I'd love to mention you. Uh, could you send this to your audience? Um, they see it as a win-win. You know, there they get in an article, uh, you get some credibility because the uh, uh, trade associations, even the small ones, tend to give you a, a bit more of a credibility factor with the survey. And quite often they'll either share it through social media uh, with their community or they'll share it through email and social media. Um, so that's a great way to get results. And then it's just a matter of tabulating it. And SurveyMonkey does mm -hmm. a very good job of you know showing you the results in a way that's interesting and you can sort of look at it and determine what was the aha moments what are the surprises what are the things that people would really care about right now and you always want your survey to be right now so right now with the world at large mm -hmm. there is uh, supply chain issues there are staffing issues um, there are post pandemic issues as well questions that sort of touch on all of those would be very good to have in your survey. And that would make it very likely that a journalist would say, oh yeah, I am interested in what my industry feels about this topic today. And so, uh, and you can do the same survey in six months and there would be the same mm -hmm. amount of interest within your industry because it's six months later and the industry yeah. is different and they just wanna know what how you feel about these things. Yeah, no, that's fantastic advice, Mickey. Thank you. And uh, and the thing about it is that once upon a time, people used to think that, oh, well, if you're going to do research or a survey, you know, you, it's a big convoluted thing, like you said. Um, I think today people are just, people love data points, right? And they're not really, let's be honest, I mean, they're not really digging too deeply into the methodology of the surveys or whatever. They just want the, the data points because they want it to either something to either support or or yeah. the opposite of what the media doing. builds so many stories around stats and data. And so even if it wasn't a survey or study that you did, if you are the person that fleshes out some really interesting analysis using existing data, uh, I've mm -hmm. seen people get uh, media pickup as a result of that as well. So uh, just, you know, even with simple topics, uh, you see data being used top 10 top five, you know, just, just listing something mm -hmm. and putting a number beside it really excites the media because they, they love data, they love numbers, and they know that their people love uh, top five and top 10 roundups of different uh, subjects. No, absolutely. And, um, and we all do. I mean, I think we all love it. So why why is it that so many um, press releases fail then? Because I mean, I feel like people maybe buy, you know, maybe they go to e-releases, they buy a package of, of press releases and they, they put them out and then they go, oh, well, I didn't really get the results I was looking for. Um, so what is it? Wh why is it? Why is it? What, what is it that uh, what are some of the mistakes that people make? I mean, we talked about not being strategic and that. But what are some other mistakes people make? Right. So I think the biggest um, mistake that people make is they write the press release from the standpoint of uh, what they want out of it. And you have a new product. You want to sell more of those products. Therefore, the press release is all about selling. And a journalist's job is not to sell your product. Your, the journalist's job is they are a gatekeeper and they are determining what should they curate and share with their audience. And so you have to sort of take that into uh, what you're writing about and reverse engineer your announcement through the lens of that so that you're actually giving them something compelling that they'll say, oh, this is something that would be of interest to my audience and I would like to share it with them. So it you really want to come at it from an idea of contribution, that you're sharing something that is important or interesting or compelling. And sometimes you can still accomplish the same goal of announcing your product, but you're doing it through a different lens and a different process by which you're still accomplishing what you want but you, you're also taking into account, first and foremost, what the journalist wants.
Yeah, no, I think that's a that's an excellent piece of advice because yeah, a lot of times people will just write the press release from okay, we have a bit of news, let's do it. Here's a template. Oh, I found this template on the web. Let's just kind of change this around. I guess the other part too is uh, is as part of the press releases, you know, we often have quotes in them, and you know, from from either from the, you know the company or somebody else. And, and I feel sometimes that's another area where where sometimes the quotes are. Yeah, great. Sometimes they're like blah. I mean, what what's what's your what's your point of view on the, the quotable part? Quotes are probably one of the easiest ways to ensure that you remain in an article. Um, I have seen many people issue press releases that inspire an article, and the article goes to print a few days after their press release, and they don't get mentioned at all. And it's not a conspiracy. The journalist mm -hmm. didn't intend for that to happen, but the journalist probably included you in the original article and the managing editor saw the article, didn't understand why this small company that he'd never heard of is there and he crossed it out. Uh, but if you had a compelling quote that really resonated and sort of uh, highlighted and spotlighted what this article was about, uh, it, the managing editor would completely understand why you appear in that article because that's an amazing quote. And so, so many people do safe, bland quotes. And if you do a really compelling quote, something that if the journalist paraphrased what you wrote, there would be a loss, a loss of energy, a loss of wordsmith. It could be anything, but you want to make it that you really stand out. And it doesn't have to be a long quote. I mean, a, a one sentence or two sentence quote is all that you need. And it doesn't have to be flowery or uh, poetic or anything like that, but it has mm. to be compelling. So be forceful, be authoritative, uh, active verb over passive, and just really stand out and shine in that quote. Yeah, because you see a lot of the most start with like, oh, we're really happy or we're, we're excited. Um, and you think, yeah, well, you probably should be, but you know, that's probably not newsworthy, is it? <laughs> no, not at all. <laughs> Yeah. Um, so what's what's some more um, what's what's another piece of advice that you would give to people, say to people who don't have press releases as part of their, you know, ongoing strategic marketing plan right now? Right. So uh, you, press releases are so effective because of the leverage. Um, when a press release goes over a wire like PR Newswire, who is our Newswire partner, uh, it literally is available to tens of thousands of media. Now, of course, all of them are not going to uh, write an article about you. Uh, the most successful press releases are generally a dozen or so write about you. But mm -hmm. uh, early in the pandemic, we did a press release for the Dining Bond Initiative, which was basically just a nonprofit grassroots short-lived program that tried to help uh, restaurants that were closed during the pandemic and you could nominate your favorite local restaurant if they were able to communicate with them through social media or email or other avenues and they accepted you could give a donation that would be backed by a gift certificate and the money would immediately go to help that restaurant whether they wanted to share it with their employees and staff or whether they needed it to keep the lights on whatever and uh, it got picked up in over 150 articles uh, yeah. New York Times, Wall Street Journal, um, all the major publications, a lot of small daily newspapers picked it up, a lot of food trade publications picked it up. It generated millions of dollars in revenue that went directly to restaurants. And that happened with one press release. And so that's an mm -hmm. extreme example of what leverage can do. And so it's a huge opportunity. You just want to make sure that you're leading with your most newsworthy uh, but in this case, they were very newsworthy. It was a time where there was a lot of negative news and uncertainty, and they were coming out with something that was positive and that anybody right. could anybody could use that. And so that's, what I think, why it resonated and did so well. Yeah, no, I mean, I, I love that. I love that. And I love the fact that the people were, were creative about it um, because that's the other part too is, I mean, as we mentioned already, is I think sometimes – you know, companies now like they put so much effort and creativity into maybe into their social media posts. Maybe they're even posting on platforms that don't even resonate with their audience or whatever. But they're getting super excited and and super, um, you know, creative with it. And then ignoring something when it comes to something like a press release, not putting the same energy or attention in that. Yeah. 
Yeah. What's um, so? Um, what's your what's your thoughts on the role of press releases going forward? What 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 uh, what role are they going to play in the marketing mix? I think that they're still going to play an important part. Um, we've seen uh, the newswire accepting of other types of media. For example, it's not unusual for the newswire to give journalists access to the feeds and your ability to customize the feeds for you to in the fashion industry, for example, to Instagram influencers. And so mm -hmm. I remember over 10 years ago, it was very difficult if you had a successful blog to get uh, newswire access, login access, to be able to create those custom feeds. And uh, over time, the newswire is recognizing that people are getting their news from lots of different sources. And I think that opening that up uh, is an exciting thing. I think that also there is a movement towards video. I don't know what that looks like right now in the form of a video press release, but I think mm -hmm. that we're probably five or six years away from people including with their press release a video version of it where you've created some collateral that a journalist doing a story, if they're doing a video story, would be able to use it as B-roll and cut and paste and, and be able to actually tell your story through video. Yeah, no, I, I agree. And I would say, yeah, you're probably right. We're probably a little ways away from that yet. Because again, that would, I mean, that's something that you could, you know, you could do really well if you put a lot of thought and effort into it, but you could do really horribly if you didn't. Right. <laughs> Um, great. Um, so um, the other thing that I just wanted to to um, ask you about is is how much of the you know how how strong is the media itself today? Like, I mean, the avenues for for getting picked up. I mean, where are are, are there are there alternatives now today, or or where 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 is the best place to get picked up? Right. So um, it depends on what market you're in. Um, in the North American market. Uh, I think that including a major newswire like PR Newswire is, is really important. Um, E-releases was founded by developing its own database of journalists to email to, and that has grown to include the newswire distribution today uh, that we partner with PR Newswire. PR Newswire itself charges over $1,000 to move a 500 word press release nationally, and that's included you know, even with our $269 new customer special. And we're able to do that because we created a partnership with them and they saw that we were servicing an industry that uh, small business owners, entrepreneurs, mm -hmm. authors, and people like that that didn't have deep pockets, but uh, they they represent an opportunity to serve. And so uh, we, we, we crafted our partnership so that it is just that uh, we schedule our releases for next business day because they have overnight staff that uh, have to be there in case there's breaking news or a recall or they have to get something out to Asia, uh, but they don't really work very much overnight. So right. they're able to set up our, our press releases overnight and it doesn't cost them additional labor. So we really did try to craft it in a way that uh, allows them to help the small business community and it gives our members access to uh, you know, a wide distribution that's normally afforded to like, you know, publicly traded companies and, and larger corporations or people with deep pockets. Yeah, no, that's that's fantastic, and I, and I love the way in in many ways you kind of dem democratizing press releases, right? And uh, right. no, it's it, it's very it's very interesting, and I really would encourage people like all of all of Mickey's information will be below this video, but I really would uh, encourage people to check out e releases and and go go kind of think again about your whole press release strategy. Do you have one? Do you just fling them out occasionally? Do you use a template from thirty years ago? What do you do? Like have a good conversation about it. Um, listen, Mickey, before we go, you know, please do tell people, I mean, you've told them a lot about e-releases, but anything else you want to add on yourself sure. or e-releases? That's right. So I've created a free masterclass for my customers to try to get them to, to do more strategic types of press releases. It's a video course that's less than an hour long. Uh, it basically will walk you through an audit of your business and do these eight strategic ideas inspire you to create versions for your company, your business, or, or you personally. And it's uh, completely free. It's at ereleases.com forward slash plan, P-L-A-N. And I would advise anybody who's considering press releases to start there and come up with a strategic press release, ideally four to six strategic press release ideas. And that way you would have a whole PR campaign that you could do and see if PR might not work for you. Yeah, listen, great. I would encourage people to go check it out. Um, and uh, 
and go do do the course and and because i mean it's a it's a great opportunity it's it's not it, a little bit of thought a little bit of effort it's it's a it's a well defined channel marketing channel to use if you use it correctly all right well listen thanks again mickey thank you for watching and listening and i will see you all again soon thank you